My name is Vanessa Fuller-Brown, and I'm instructing on behalf of the Appleton Museum's art education team here in Ocala. So thank you for joining us. Today, we are taking on painting palm trees, and I'm going to share the prep that will be our guide and mentor and teaching tool as I take you through step-by-step -step instruction uh, over the next two hours. So one of the reasons uh, we chose palm trees, um, I can speak for myself in being a professional artist for over 30 years. I paint on commission and I'm an art instructor, whether I'm painting an American landscape or a European landscape, palm trees are one of the most requested subject matters and they're absolutely beautiful with just a little tool, brush technique um, and a little know-how. So. This will be our guide, but I'd like to suggest something. Um, if you are, if this is an introductory experience for you and the um, one of the first times you've painted, especially with acrylics, I invite you to join me for step-by-step. -step. I've blocked the class and when it's time to move to the next exercise or the next piece or part of the creation, please follow me. If you're an experienced painter, my suggestion is stretch yourself and get out of the box. You can alter colors. You can enhance um, the painting itself. You can add subject matter just so that you're not sitting and waiting for a block of time if you have already completed the exercise. Now, we're going to go in and grab that tree. And what I mean by that is we have two hours and I teach according to the block of time. Plain air style painting, the masters or our everyday artists, such as you and I, the goal is to sit outside, look at a palm tree, look at a landscape, grab what you see before something is altered, whether it's lighting that shifts, whether clouds roll in, whether a horse and a rider move in, whether the people move, you have to grab that subject matter, frame it, making a painting and go. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're going to be talking about brush techniques, how to create the palm tree. It's only one style. There are many ways to do this. We're working with our time and a plein air, fast brush style. So allow yourself to be loose, allow yourself to be playful. Let the muse in you and your own creativity come out. You don't have to box it. You don't have to paint just like I, I am um, instructing, all right? It's simply a guide. So. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is um, our supplies. You should have your primaries as well as black and white. All that we put on that material list was red, yellow, blue. For introductory, we don't get fancy. I'm not gonna get fancy with terminology or names, but you may have either a phthalo blue or an ultramarine blue. You are welcome to use each. And whatever you have, it's still going to work. It will still be beautiful. I have put both up here and I'm combining my two so that no matter what you're painting at home, you see a little likeness or a lot of likeness of what you have. So I'm using both. If you'd like to use both and you have them, I welcome that. But you can use either or. That, that's what you see on the palette. You should have water. You should have a fan brush. I have two sizes. Um, two shapes, you should have either a one inch or a three quarter inch flat. You should have a half inch flat and a liner or a detailed brush for right at the end. And if you choose, it's an absolute option. If you have round brushes and you're used to using round brushes and you'd like to, that's cool, you can. But what I'm gonna be using for most of it are these three brushes right here. All right, so like I said, you can improvise. If you don't have your flats, you're welcome to use your rounds, but I do hope that you have uh, your fan brush because it's not used a lot and it, it's beautiful, especially with beachy scenes, palm trees. We're not doing backgrounds and waves, but they're fantastic for waves. In fact, I'm gonna show you a couple palm tree paintings that I've done also, just so that you know that there's many, many styles that it might influence. Um, and suggest a couple things if you're an experienced painter. We're going to be beginning with a blue background, but you are welcome to do sunset colors, pinks, ambers, golds. You can do a green background. You can split your canvas. 
if you've painted it blue already for any reason, because this is the image that was up, you're welcome to take the 15 minutes that we take to create that background and improv, do something wonderful and creative. This is um, a gray, beachy, windy scene. This image was created for a fan brush only workshop, fan brush only. And we based this on the Florida Highwaymen style. That was our model and prompt. So this is what I created in the instruction, fan brush only. And you can see the wispiness of these palm trees. This was for introduction for water soluble oils, also influenced by um, Highwayman style. And this was my model. Just sharing that there's many ways to go about this. Once again, I'm choosing to do the simplest introductory way of two palms or one palm, and then just the, the top of the other palm, as you see in the Im imagery. But please go ahead and add palm trees. My goal is not that you paint the most incredible painting you've ever done, but that you learn skill that you can move forward with that will enhance your own painting style in the way that pleases you. All right, so I think that we've introduced um, everything. What I'd like to do is share the order that we're going to go through the next two hours with. And again, please work with the block structure so that the end um, you have accomplished something because you can always go back. You're gonna get a PowerPoint with this that fine tunes, it's got the images all the way through the step-by-step -step instruction. And so you can return to that and complete anything or detail it with finesse to your liking. So the order is we're gonna take, we're gonna mix some blues or whatever color that you choose. And we're gonna take 15 minutes and we're gonna block the painting. The next thing we're gonna do is move to um, a sketch. Hopefully that you have a pencil close by or a piece of a graphite or willow charcoal. We're simply going to spend five minutes or, or five or six minutes and sketching out the movement that we're going to be um, taking on with the brushes. The next thing we're gonna do a little brush technique with a flat brush as well as the fan brush. And that will, we'll take care of that in 15 minutes. By then the base will be dry on our canvas and we will be ready to move into those palm trees. We'll spend about 10 minutes on the trunk. So we have 45 minutes to take on the fronts. So let's talk about blue and white. Like I said, I'm combining phthalo and ultramarine just for the cause. If you're interested in why two blues, we won't talk about it more than what I'm going to share. Ultramarine is wonderful for, it's got a, it, it goes to the red side. It has a red undertone. So it's wonderful for jewel purples, pinks. It's beautiful. It gives you a really true value system for those very, very warm tones. The phthalo blue is going to uh, take you towards your yellows. And so it's great for greens and jewel tones. It doesn't matter which one you use, you're not gonna compromise a great painting, but that's just the difference as you on, move ongoing, there are two blues. So if you say, hey, why can't I get that specific color? It's because you need the other blue. And that's just a base color theory practice, okay? So we're gonna roll. Let's mix paint. I have pre-mixed a great color, but I am gonna mix it with you also. So I'm gonna show you what I pre-mixed as a base, okay? It's a, it's a medium, medium blue. If I hold it up to the painting, you'll see that's what's sort of across the top. You're going to start with white because blue is aggressive and it travels so quickly. So as you mix, what I'm going to suggest, start with white, two parts white, one part blue. A lot of this color, a lot of this class is going to be about mixing. Two parts white, one part blue. Two to one. More white, less blue. Okay? If you get too dark, put more white in there. So I'm gonna mix it with you. And so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna go for phthalo. And so about half, 50% I've added, I'm gonna mix it right up. And that should be two to one, should be giving you about what you need. Now I'd like to say um, it's wise often to test with small amounts to make sure you've got the right color so that you don't waste large amounts of paint trying to color correct it. In this case, you can't really go wrong. But I'd like to share, once you see that color, 
add the white, add the blue. You need to have enough paint so you can cover the sides of the canvas. You should have a nine by 12 canvas. Sorry, I didn't share that. Nine by 12 canvas or board, either one, but you should have enough paint so you don't have to go back and remix it anymore. This color is going to move across the top of the canvas solidly and then we're going to add a little white so gradually it gets lighter if you're an accomplished painter you're welcome to put some clouds in but this is about palm trees and not about clouds so we won't be painting clouds but we will lighten it as we go down and progress and it will get a little lighter so i'm going to give you a moment just to get your paint mixed make sure you've got enough i'm going to move in my reserve that i have already mixed All right, and when you're ready, we're going to start laying out the base of the canvas. Again, this should maybe take us 10 minutes. Um, what I'll ask you is if you want to paint clouds or do anything, find the breaks when you're complete with an exercise to work between those times um, and create those clouds. It's more fun when we all stay together and then um, you hear everything that I'm saying. I'm going to talk all the way through. My goal is to give you as much information as I have gleaned in my 30 something years of being an artist. All right. So with that being said, we're going to use either the three quarter inch or the one inch. I'm using my three quarters just because it's full of paint already. It doesn't matter. Okay. What I'd like to say about acrylic paint really quickly is if you use too much water, you will change the property of the paint and that forces it to dry faster, which is what we try and work against using acrylics. So less water only when you have to, you'll feel that it get the brush gets cakey. You can feel it, the, the, the paint cakes up and starts drying and it mats the brush. Or if you really need to change the color, I'll let you know, but not too much paint. You'll just uh, get far more out of it and much better coverage, okay? So what I suggest always for great coverage is short one half inch to one inch brush strokes that are overlapping. So if I paint across, right, you can see that there's really good coverage. So as you completely alter, alternate the direction of your brush strokes, keep your attention on just two to three inches across. So about 10, 12 square inches. That's all you're concentrating on. Then you move forward. I often see painters with long strokes and what that does, it, it leaves areas with less coverage. So when it dries, you have little white um, areas poking through the canvas. You've got to coat it, coat it again. So we're gonna start at the top. We didn't have time to gesso and base this. Uh, so I'm in the same position that you are all in, but if you alter the, the paint strokes, you should be holding about right there. That's called the crimp. And that's, if you haven't held a brush, and this is an introductory class for you, you're pretty much holding it like a pen. And one of the things I also um, advise is to roll it around and learn to use all the sides, all the sides of it, so that you're not just doing something that's comfortable. Um, and I call cookie cutter, where you're just doing one thing after another, all right? So we're gonna alter this. I'm, you can see that I'm painting about one third across the top horizontally. If, whoops, you'll see that I've just mixed blues and that's because I dipped into the paint that I just used. If you have to remix your paint, and it's not exactly on the blue, don't worry about it, go forward, we're painting sky. And one of the wonderful things, as you alternate brush strokes, you use more pressure. What we're interested in now is getting the paint on and moving the paint to where we need it to be. So it's about pressure, altering strokes. You wanna make sure that your brush is also at about a 45. If you're painting up like this perpendicular, there's no paint on the end of that brush. You're gonna be doing this forever. So you want that angle. You wanna be able to rotate so that you use all the paint before you pick up any more, okay? Remember, if you're painting at home and you have, this is called a gallery wrap, I'm reminding you to paint around that edge. Again, you see different blues on mine because I mixed one in front of you 
with you. And then I had my stash. That's what I call it, by the way. I call it my stash. If you're moving rapidly and using enough paint, it should be nice and wet, which is what we need to blend white into. Okay. I'm gonna paint my edge quickly. The reason you don't want to forget that edge, it's really tough to match blues at the end or whatever color it is that you've been working on. Okay, so I've got the top third paint uh, painted. And again, this part is about getting it on and moving it with pressure. I'll share that when I paint, I usually have a rag in one hand and a brush in the other. And when I don't want to use excess water because I don't want it to dry, I pop the brush when I get as much paint off as I can. And instead, I pop it right in that rag. Now, I could wipe it in front of you, but what I do, I slip it right in there and I gently just ease off the excess paint. And once you do that, this brush becomes a blender, okay? It doesn't have as much paint on, so it's not going to add any. And you can go back over, give your work a once over, and now your pressure is a little gentler, but you're also using that 45 and a soft and gentle touch, alternating the brush strokes so that brush application and technique is the same. You can see if I were to slow down, that's what I'm doing. That's in slow-mo. So I'm alternating, I'm going over and over in different directions. And what that does, you, what I want you to do is look for any white, make sure there's no white, and then look for any lines that you can distinguish. If you leave a hard line in acrylic um, and it dries, it does something called flash. So when you look at that painting and it's finished, it'll stop your eye and it will shine or show up from the side. So you wanna make sure that there's no lines and you have smooth coverage. Okay, so we're gonna add white. We're not gonna add white on the canvas. We're gonna add white to the last color. I call it small increments of color change. So here's my, here's my stash, here's my base sky blue, all right? Now I'm gonna add, let's say, equal parts, one-to-one -one of white, okay? We are tinting. When you add white, you're tinting. If, a, if an instructor or a course tells you to tint or you, that's spoken of, you're adding white. If you're toning, you're adding gray. And if you're shading, you're adding black. We're adding white, so we're tinting, all right? Now, once you've mixed it, because I know some of you might be using palette knives. I forgot to bring one into the studio with me. So I'm gonna wipe off, make sure once you've mixed, you wipe that excess paint off your brush. If you don't, you can't control. My goal is to teach you how to control with the brush strokes so you have tools. So you have to wipe it off, otherwise you're gonna transfer that on and it's not gonna do what you need to and you won't be able to blend, all right? So once, once you've wiped the excess off, you can pick a little up and I'm gonna move right over. Again, it should be really wet still. And this is the color I'm gonna graduate down. I'm gonna paint it right up to the line. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple square inches at a time, right? I'm gonna wipe my brush off and it becomes that blender, right? So now you can see there's a contrast line. There's my last blue, here's my new blue. What do I do, all right? Well, same brush strokes, alternating, overlapping. And you gently blend. The pressure is softer when you blend. A Little more pressure when you get that paint on, soften it, and you can blend up into the sky as far as you can. It might happen that it makes a cloud for you. And if it does, 
there's beautiful variations in the sky. So if you're in a skilled painter, this is what I want to say. If you'd like to enhance your sky at this point and bring in some beautiful colors, you can. If you'd like to add um, red, if you'd like to actually add um, red, red and yellow and, and um, create some beautiful sunrise colors, I welcome that. It will still work with the palm tree. So this is how we're gonna move across and work on the rest of the paint. What I wanna say also is if you love that nice um, texture that oil gives you, oil paint, please don't try and create that in acrylic. It won't happen with acrylic. It will suck in, flatten out when it dries. You'll have a line or two that is raised that you won't get. Uh, that beautiful texture, unless you have some level three or four materials, it won't happen. So I'd like to cover something. If you find that your step one, the darker has dried and it's not blending well, or if you're painting later and you find that with the nature of acrylics, the most wonderful tool that we have is that we created a nice reserve of that first color. So you should be able to correct it. If you need to wipe your brush off, go back to that first color that you made the darker blue that we began in the beginning, the two to one, and simply bring in blue, add more to your canvas and blend it in from the other side. Again, you should be at about a 45 degree angle or so, give or take alternating your brush strokes. Acrylic dries quickly. And this little skill set right here of being able, I call it push and pull. So you're adding a little bit, you're lightening a little bit, you're blending, you're going back and forth, working while it's wet and having these reserves uh, paints. When you make the blue, make a lot of it. You can always go back. Um, and redeem any painting or any, I don't want to say mistakes because there's no mistakes in art, but you're always be able, you're able to control your painting, okay? So blending gave me that. It may have given you something different. So blending itself just gave me a nice movement with that clouds. If it did not, and you have a beautiful line that graduates down, that's fantastic. Um, what I suggest is that you have a hard line somewhere, keep your eye on it, wipe your brush off and blend it in. Now that I have that blending done, I have a little movement. Now I'm strictly gonna use the new combination with the, the tint that we created with the addition of white to paint the rest of the canvas. One of the things that I caution painters um, and creatives about is don't overpaint. This is a sky. And remember, we're trying to capture that fresh air, fresh air. So don't overpaint going over and over your work, self-analyzing, let it go and be playful. As long as you have a middle blue, short overlapping brush strokes, Much of this will not be seen clearly because there will be palm fronds in front of it. Please remember that. A well done background says, look at this and presents what's in front of it rather than look at me. So we're doing that part. We're doing the look at this, we're presenting. The reminder to hit the sides of that canvas.
when you've painted the edge, check out the top surface and the edges that you've paint, painted because often the paint rolls forward, especially if you do it quickly as I just did, and that paint will roll onto the edges. You won't naturally see it um, immediately, but acrylic dries at least one, if not two shades darker as it dries and you'll see it then. So once I've painted the side, I generally do just a quick check and I take my brush as it's a blender and I gently just um, comb, I wanna say a, a, a combing or a gentle pull in of the paint into the canvas itself with a blender and make sure that all is well and blended. Again, a once over, I'm gonna um, remove the excess paint, soften it. As you're blending or softening, your pressure's softer, but what you're doing is also picking paint up on the brush. So if you know you're gonna blend for a while, every, I'd say 45 seconds or a minute, stop and remove the paint. Otherwise it's blending. You can also use, a, I could be using a fresh brush. I could be using a new tool, but one of my goals is to use minimum and create maximum. Sometimes we get so fancy about all the supplies required that the project becomes about the supplies and not about the inspiration. So my goal is to show you all the ways you can use just a few brushes and simplify things. It's also great plain air tool if you choose to go outside and paint palm trees in the future. Um, it's quite a schlep when you take all your supplies out there. Don't need a lot. All right, so I'm gonna take that brush, put it in water. If you're painting at home and you want your brushes to last, what you should do is actually water them down, clean them, and I usually just float mine on the top or balance them. It will help the brushes last longer. Otherwise, water gets in that crimp underneath and you lose the brushes faster. So if you really want the longevity out of your brush, you should be washing it out for the sake of the class. I'm gonna just immerse mine in some water and I'm gonna move this out of the way. This is what I have for my base. Give you a moment to finish up. All right. And I'm going to place it away to dry. And what we're going to be working on next is brush, uh, brush technique while we have our brushes out. And I'm gonna give you just a minute or so to finish that up. And for brush technique, either a piece of paper, even a rag or a paper towel, if you wanna play on that, if you need a moment just to get that in front of you, anything, just to play with the tools. And we're only going, we just used blue and white. Now we're gonna use black. So you're, also, you're welcome to use blue if you have some uh, dark blue out there. I'm going to be working in black. I'm gonna put on the camera what I showed you in the beginning, okay? And this, this is just brush technique that I'm gonna show you right now and what I used is the half inch. So what you'll need next is a paper towel, a piece of paper, and if you have an extra canvas, that's fine, but we didn't request it. So we're gonna be using a half inch, and I'm also gonna show you a little bit with a fan brush and how to create these, how and why and what we're doing, okay? So I'm gonna place that back. So you need black paint, you need these two brushes, and I'm gonna grab, all right. So I wanna go over a couple techniques first in, in creating the trunk and they're going to be needed and it's a little easier to practice on a paper towel or anything that you can find, scratch paper, any surface that you can find, all right? So uh, what I'd like to tell you to do first in this case, gently wet the tip of your brush. I'm using the half inch flat. Gently wet it, press it against the side or on a rag just to get the excess water and I'm gonna pick up a little black. Now, Deb, do you mind getting a little closer in for me here? Okay. This is the first thing I'd like you to try with me. I just call it 
you're gonna, you're gonna drag or pull, but I call it piggybacking, okay? So if I place this here, you'll see what I'm gonna do. This almost looks like a spine, right? Well, it's the nature of the palm tree trunk. But what I'd like you to do with me, we're gonna use the broad side of the brush, gentle pressure, a drag of about half inch and lift. You'll see when you lift that um, it, it's a little random line. Then we're gonna lay it down again and lift. Lay it down again and lift. Lay it down again, lift. Now you can come straight down if you like straight palms. The texture that you see on the trunk that we call bark, it's actually not bark. It's the dead cells left from where the palm, old palm fronds have fallen away. So that's a fun fact. I'm gonna turn my brush over because I've got paint on the other side, right? Before I load more paint. Well, what's left are these little pieces and parts. They are not equally, always equally distributed. So you might, let's try one right next to it. So you might do a half inch and then you might do something that's an inch and then you might do three or four. So be creative. I, this is only one way to paint this. It's a fast way, okay? So I wanted you to try that with your brush. Okay, the next thing I'd like you to do with this brush, get this out of the way. Um, if you have extra blue, my suggestion is that you cover it and set it aside. Cover it if, with some, in some way, even a paper towel over the top would be, it's a wonderful tool to have right at the end if your palm trees get too full. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to share with you for brush strokes, again, with your um, half inch flat, and I'm going to share it right on this palm. I'd like you to line the tip with the side of the palm. I use my hand to give me a little leverage. When we hit that canvas next, that blue is going to be dry. So you're able to have leverage. Lean on the canvas a little bit, and we're going to gently drag and pull. In this case, just drag and pull all the way through that palm just to get the practice. You can, once it's a little longer and about half an inch, then you can, you'll get it. Uh, we'll shorten it up when we actually paint. I want you to feel it. The other thing that I want to also say, I am in supreme support of being as comfortable as you can. So if you find that you just can't get in that angle that you need to, please turn your canvas, rotate your canvas, um, do whatever it is so that I may be doing something that um, is inhibiting for you in some way. And so whatever is comfortable and so that you are as coordinated as you can be for the best possible outcome, okay? So it's that simple drag. I wanted you to see that. Now I've done it here. You could be doing it on a, on a napkin at home, which is also fine. And it could just look like that. That's just the stroke that I want. Pressure and lift. It looks a little raggedy on that edge, but that's what's gonna make it look like a little bit of, of um, a light and light source happening or a lot of light source happening on your palm but you're gonna line it up. It's important to line it up, pressure, pressure lifts and up, pressure lifts and up, okay? Um, last thing that I'd like to do with this brush, I'm gonna wet it again and dab it just to get a little of the extra water off. Again with black. This time I want to, we're gonna rotate it so that I'm actually able to create a line like this. So what I'd like you to do is, um, Contact the canvas, pressure, drag it towards you, towards you, towards you, towards you, and lift. Do that in, um, in a couple different directions, okay? Pressure and lift. Pressure and lift. This time, give it a bit of a curve. Pressure, drag, and lift. Now, this is the one time, well, one of the one times <laughs> that I really suggest using a little more water. You don't want too much water because you don't want it to run, especially if you're up on a um, easel of some kind, but a little more. So I'm going to put my tip in the water, gently dab it on the side or on a rag. Now I've got still got some black on here, but what that water does, it gives you the opportunity to create a very fine line.
And as you, Deb, can you get in here? As you lift off, thank you. We have the most fantastic camera woman. So as you drag, can you see what my brush is doing? My angle is changing so that I've just got that little, look at, look what's left. See that tiny little bit. So you're alternating. And as you rotate that brush, as you rotate that brush, you just have a couple hairs. And what that does, it gives you those fine points. Now, if you are somebody who loves detail, we're not doing a lot, but you'll have the opportunity to use your liner here to give yourself the tips of these palm trees. And again, you'll have leverage, the blue will be dry, but you can come to some of the tips and really give yourself a gentle application. Again, a little water in black. So let's go back to the palm tree. So we've just got another minute or so. So I showed you the liner. The last thing that I'd like to show you here is the fan brush, okay? So what I'm gonna do just to show, I'm gonna give up myself again, I'm using it sideways. So I've got the narrow part. And then right here where they all gather, I'll tell you why I'm doing this later. Alternating brush strokes, I'm gonna create not a ball, but I'm gonna fill in the space. See what I've done there? So I've just given myself some nice sweeps and I filled in that space. Now I'm gonna to switch to if you have a fan brush. If you don't have a fan brush, you can do all the work with the other. If you do have the fan brush, that would be great. Great, let me try this one. Now, the same thing, I'm gonna wet my fan brush, wipe it a little bit to get the excess, pop my fan brush in the black, and we've got the center of the fronds that we have just created. We can also create the center of the fronds with the fan brush. Many people don't realize how much you can do with a fan brush. So here I go, Deb's behind me. Here I go. So you can see it's giving me the same line. That's why I said you can use either or. So once you have done painted the center of the fronds, okay, then it's wonderful to fill those fronds in. What I'd like you to do is take the edge, just like we did, take the edge of the brush, line it up with the center of the frond, and you're going to drag down and lift. Drag down and lift. Drag down and lift. Drag down and lift. Drag down. And again, this is just practice. Line it up with the center of the frond drag down and lift. Once you've done that a few times, you can get playful. If the wind was blowing across your canvas, where would the palms go, right? Where would those fronds go? So on the next one, drag down and away and down and away. As long as they're going, moving in the right direction, it's the most playful tool. It looks like the wind is blowing across. And again, we've used it two ways, right? We used that narrow edge right at the top and this time we were perpendicular. Then we went to about a 45, lined it up, dragged down, you put a little bit of an arc in it, arch, separate them try them um, fronts coming down in different directions also. So when you do this work, you can alternate and actually creating the front, you can shift from having that edge flat right up against and drawing away, then you can rotate the brush right next to it. And now you can have a single front coming out. Then you can rotate it again flat. 
if you were working plain air, which means working outside live in nature, you're going to want the fastest. So what I'd like you to do is to spend one more minute being playful, seeing how much canvas you can cover or how much of your rag or paper towel that you could practice area that you can cover, okay? So we've, we're not gonna go over um, the round brush because the only reason you'd be using a round brush right now is if you're an experienced painter and you know what to do with your round brush, right? I'll do it, actually, I'll just do just, just once. It's the same thing, pressure, drag, and lift. Pressure, drag, and lift. Pressure, drag, and lift. So pressure is a really big deal with the pops. Pressure down, pull away from you or to you, and gently glide it up, okay? So I'm gonna take a moment to get that out of our way. Our base should be drying, okay? And the next thing that I'd like to move to is a sketch. So if you have um, a piece of paper and a pencil available, you can also use willow charcoal, um, which is wonderful. Most people don't realize if you don't like what you've done with willow charcoal, you can just rub it and um, with your hands or a rag and you can actually just move it right off the paper. In this case, I'm using a pencil. I'm going to hold up what we're doing. Okay. And this simply is just <clears throat> from the same painting that we showed you. You are welcome to create your own palm trees. If you'd like several palm trees, whatever it is that you'd like to do, for the time that we have together, you don't have to follow these instructions totally, okay? We take a pencil and you have five or six minutes. What we're going to do is compose. This is the composition. If you'd like to follow me, please do so step by step. This is a place that you can work freely, compose whatever it is that you'd love to create against your blue sky with the skill sets that I give you for the palm trees. Okay, if you're following me, you generally with a layout, you just start with the most prominent subject matter, which is the palm tree in the middle, okay? So I'm going to begin with my pencil about two thirds up in my canvas, just to the right from the center. So this is the center of the canvas. So center of your piece of paper or wherever you're sketching, it's just to the right of center, and that's the center um, horizontally. So we're just above. So just to the right of center and just above center. So once you have that, now I'm giving you this first line, and this is, this is the, the gold right here. So that's the trunk, but what I'd like to show you this is the trunk, but I want you to go ahead and finish this line all the way up because a frond is gonna happen here. And this is just really nice continuity, okay? So that's your trunk. And once you have that trunk down, I'm gonna put a couple more. Be free, this is, remember this is just, I'm offering you a model and a guide. I'm gonna give you the lines of the lines of the first palm tree, the larger palm tree that has the trunk. Going to add So these are the most important lines. Once you have that, you can start filling in or creating the fronds. 
with a pencil. I found that if you go there first, if you go there first with your pencil, it's a little easier to go there with your brush. So let's start on the lowest hanging fronds, okay? What I'd like to say here to be comfortable with, even in the drawing, something that I watch painters do is they're minimal on their fronds. So they'll shorten them up and they'll be spindly. I'm gonna show you how to not make a spindly palm and it's really practical, it's really simple. But in this case, allow it to flop right off that canvas, but use your pencil and give yourself some long hanging um, fronds. There's nothing happening in the composition unless you wanna place a couple extra ones here. So take advantage of that, okay? I'm working my way counterclockwise now. Our brushes will be doing this, but if you're exploring this with a pencil, also explore allowing them to cross. Here goes one, allow them to cross. And they can straighten out, okay? These go down. This frond comes up, falls off your canvas and enters back into your canvas right here. Okay, here I go again. Comes up, falls off your canvas, re-enters your canvas, if you'd like to follow me, right there. Which means that We'll be, when you, when you create anything, the subject matter that's beyond and in the distance is painted first. Then you graduate to the midground, then you graduate to the foreground. So when we're painting it, we'll be painting these fronds first so that what's happening here falls in front, this shifts behind. The reason I'm sharing that is because it looks messy when you're sketching it, but now we're going to overlap the fronds that we just laid because this one is in the front and a different color. All right. Then we're gonna come down to the last one on this particular palm, something like that but free yourself with your sketches. You're welcome to improvise. You're welcome to change. You're welcome to add some fronds. Again, this is just a guide. I'm going to move just for a minute or so. We're not gonna to spend too much time. Again, I'm going to go counterclockwise here because it's easier for me and the angles that I am, okay? This one actually overlaps the tree a little bit. We've also got one that falls right off the canvas. It's a lazy painting, okay? And then we have a few that hang down this way. So what I'm going to do is keep this in front of you and you can see what we've created, okay? So the palm, at the top with the trunk, all right? Palm fronts are at the top and we have the lower left side. Now, if you would like to do something playful because there is this negative space, if you'd like to do something playful and you wanna just put a couple, the tips of some fronds to fill up the negative space, go for it, all right? When you're ready, our blue should be dry. So I'm going to give you one more minute just to finish up Check out your composition. If you've added or changed or altered in any way, make sure that you're satisfied because what we'll be doing is now transferring this onto our blue. So be sure of what it is that you'd like to do. In my case, what I generally do and what I suggest you is keep this to the side so that you can see what you're doing. It's hand-eye coordination that we're training. You see something, 
you repeat it onto your canvas, hand-eye coordination. And blue should be dry. Now, either a pencil or if you have chalk, I suggest no charcoal because sometimes the charcoal um, is a little dark and smudges with the paint and it grays out the subject matter unless you, and it requires a lot of paint actually to get rid of that. So I suggest just a pencil or a piece of chalk if you have your art materials handy. I'm gonna use a piece of chalk because it will show up a little easier on the screen. If I were at home, I'd be using a pencil, but I'm gonna use chalk white so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, all I wanna do is take what I've just done and place it on my painting. You want to begin with that first line that continues from the trunk and folds up. That one line is really important in the composition and it gives you some structure to work around, okay? So I'm going to lay out the first tree and then I'm going to, uh, I'll show you what that looks like and I'm gonna ask Deb to gently walk behind me again. The center, the base of your trunk should be at about midpoint, maybe a little to the left, but if you want a starting point, about mid left with your chalk, okay? Sorry, I didn't share that earlier, but I'm sure you could see that. It's a little easier for me to start from the bottom on this. I'm leaning on my canvas with a little texture because it's dry now, okay? So there's that first line for me. There's the first line for me. From there, I'm going to do the fronds to the left. Tell you what, I'm gonna take this over here so I can see it now. I'm gonna show you what that top palm looks like. Now, if yours is a little different, it's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Okay, I'm gonna give myself the structural lines of the second. The most important line for you on this one looks like this. I'm gonna show that to you next. It comes up. It's about two inches in from the left side of your canvas, comes up and actually crosses over the palm. Composition wise, um, it's a gentle way to not have such a sparse trunk, okay? Then I'm gonna add So here's your most important line. There's one more, one up to the side, and then one that comes directly down and off your canvas, okay? Now, when I lay the fronds in, I'm not gonna lay them all. What I want to do is do four to six that just show me the direction and the guide to which way the palms are actually moving. I mean, again, I'm gonna go counterclockwise. I'm gonna start with my lowest. All I really, I wanna give myself some guidance and some markers. So I know that they start right here by the tree, two. And I also, with this guidance and marker, I want to um, give myself a beginning and an end point so that I'm not shy of filling up the composition. So I know that I can travel my, paint, my uh, paintbrush all the way down here and I'm not gonna goof anything, all right? and then I know that they fall off the canvas. Now, there's a whole lot that happens in here, but this gives me a guidance for my paintbrush. Okay, there's the first one. That one just has three. Show you what I did. 
Okay, here's the second one coming right off here. Remember I said, let's crisscross a couple. Actually sketch that in so you remember because it's, it's a point of interest actually. These are going to come down. Remember, this is the one that travels up off the canvas, enters back into your canvas here. Direction, direction. Don't be shy of filling the canvas up. This is what we're painting. We're painting pumps. Okay. Just a couple so that we know our direction. All right, and that's a guide. Sorry, we've got one more. It's a little more full than what I created um, on the larger canvas. The dimensions were a little different. Okay. Now, if you um, if you've done something on your canvas with your pencil that you are not um, thrilled about, <laughs> and you'd like to revise, your handy, trusty tool would be that blue reserve, that stash color. <laughs> Sorry, I loved, I've always called it my stash, but that reserve that um, you create when I'm working on a painting and I have my base, I have two or three colors that I make a lot of and I set them to the side. And so that I could be on that painting for a month and I always know I can take that out and that will correct uh, whatever it is that I'm needing to correct. It's a wonderful tool to have. So you should have your image sketched out And what we're gonna do now is move to the trunk, okay? We're gonna talk about the trunk. Actually, we're gonna talk about the trunk and then we're gonna move into the rest of the tree. We're gonna make a base color now, a base color, just like we made the base color for the sky. We're gonna make a base, it's a dirty and dark green and that will serve the purpose. So I wanna say, once you've figured out that color, make enough of it. It's very simple. The colors that you're gonna need are your primaries, yellow and blue, which make green, right? Yellow and blue make green. Then we're gonna add, and we're, that'll be one-to-one -one ratio, yellow and blue. So you're gonna take a nice, a nice head of blue. This is phthalo, okay? Same, same amount of yellow. I'm gonna mix them. You'll see it makes a beautiful jewel green. I'm gonna wipe my brush off or you may be using a palette knife. I'm always just using the same tool. And then you want half that ratio. So that was one-to-one, -one. same amount blue, same amount yellow. Now you wanna cut that in half. So just half the amount of red. And you'll see that it, it dirties the green and it makes it a little darker. It's a wonderful color to paint landscapes with. So in the future, one-to-one -one, blue and yellow with 50% ratio then, cut it in half of red, all right? So I'm gonna wipe my brush off, wet it and dab it, get that excess paint off. The first thing that I'm going to do is the trunk, okay? Now, I'll, I'd like to go first and then you can follow because what we're doing is the same thing that we did in the practice round, okay? So I've got my half inch brush. I'm actually going to rotate. I'd like to share this with you. 
I'm looking at moving to a smaller canvas. Can you see if I lay my brush down, that's the width. If I ask you to rotate it a little bit, it's going to give us a little narrower, a little more narrow, sorry, trunk. I'm going to start right at the top of the trunk. It's dark. Don't be afraid of the dark. I know it's a dark color to begin with. And I'm going to drag. Remember I said place it and drag. Place it and drag. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. Dab it on the side. Pick up a little more paint. Down and drag. Down and drag. Down and drag. The base of the trunk is a little wider, so you can expand it and fill that in just a bit. If yours does not look exactly like mine, that's absolutely fine, okay? Absolutely fine. I asked you to be playful and keep it loose. Now, We've got that. This is actually the color that we will be using for a shadow, okay? Now, if you have seen that you need more paint than you had, you know what you've already done. We're going to now be basing out the palm. You're gonna go counterclockwise with me if you're working with me. All the lines that you've laid, we're going to repeat those, go over those. Remember, wet your brush a little bit. It allows this to give you a finer point. Your other option is to use a round brush if you want to. Also keep that a little more wet, okay? And I'm gonna give you just a minute to mix more paint if you realize that you're going to need that. Remember, one-to-one, -one, blue to yellow, either blue, and then 50%, cut that ratio in half, and add your red. So I'm gonna give you a minute. I'm gonna mix a little more for myself also. Wipe or clean your brush. If, if you're using a brush to pick up paint and you don't have a palette knife, really wipe your brush off so that you can control how much paint you're picking up. So once you have your paint, I'm gonna begin, just like, when, just like uh, the sketch that we practiced with, I'm gonna use it sideways. I'm at an angle, I'm not perpendicular, and I have a brush that's a little more wet that I would normally be using so that we have a minimum amount of paint to sort of sketch this out, okay? Remember, touch, pressure, and lighten the pressure and drag as you move out. Okay. This is a great time to remind you if it, you're uncomfortable in your control of that brush, you're welcome to spin your canvas. I'm not going to, I want you to be able to follow what I'm doing, but create comfort for yourself. But it may change with, um, the direction of the brush, whether you're more comfortable um, drawing away from you or drawing to you, right? Remember, if you're starting on the outside, you need to start with light pressure and increase your pressure to the middle. I'm gonna do just the same thing so you guys can follow me. Remember, this one comes back in. Pressure and lighten. Every two or three strokes, my suggestion is to wet your brush and wipe it off so that it remains wet and you'll have uh, more flexibility and control. And I'm gonna to go to the lower one, that main line.
and coming down. Now I'd like to show you a tool because I need it right now. Can you see that um, right here? That's a little thicker. Now it doesn't matter, it's palm trees, but it's a great way for me to show you what to do. Uh, painting with acrylics. If you jump on it real quick and say, okay, that, I don't like that, that's too dark. I have clean water over here. You need, you need to have clean water and not dirty water. So I'm gonna wet a clean brush that I haven't used. I generally keep one for me for that. I'm gonna take a clean brush and I'm basically gonna paint right up underneath it. I may not have moved fast enough, let's see. But you can generally, there, you can paint it up towards it. See what I'm doing? If once you get it wet enough, and I'm just jiggling that brush a little bit back and forth, clean it off, pick up more water and do it again. And you can repair that before it takes advantage of your canvas. How about that? So now I've wiped it off. Now I'm gonna start clockwise, okay? Remember when I asked you in the practice to line your brush up and drag down and lift. This is when I'd like you to do that. This is how we're going to begin with the palm trees. So flatten it out, drag and away. And remember, you can do a couple and this, make this your own. You don't have to go side by side with me. Then rotate your brush around so you're using the narrow area or the narrow sides uh, surface. Okay. And I'd like to, you to show me one more, like to show you one more thing. If you'll look up and look at the camera, especially if you're experienced, you've been painting a while. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful twist, right? So if you line your brush up, you're right on the center of that front. As you drag, Watch, I'm gonna rotate in the drag. I'm rotating, 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 and lifting right off. So it's a way to get both the broad and the tip or the narrow point in one rotation. And you don't have to change brushes to a point. It gives life with the same color. This is the shadow color. So when you're looking at foliage, what you see in the difference is generally a little more dull and, uh, and gentler. What you usually see that's bright, especially in a painting, is in the foreground. So we're using this shadow color for what's pressed back in the beyond in the palm. So I'm going to concentrate now. I'm not gonna speak and I'm just gonna work through with this dark color and you're welcome to follow my lead. I want to take a moment to remind you about your pressure. Pressure is everything. Pressure and pull and lift. Pressure and pull and lift. If now that you're starting to paint those fronds, you'll realize how helpful that that reserve of blue could be so that if you need to open some of these palms up, if you feel like they're a bit heavy, you know that you can get right back in there with a little blue and open up sky again. Keep that angle to your brush so that you have control.
Okay, I'm gonna move to my lower. Um, by taking this half inch and flattening it against the center of the, of the front, that is what, and then drawing out, drag out, then you can always give it its tip. We'll actually be doing that with a fan brush, but that's what allows it to look more full in body and not be so spindly or spiky. And that's a real tough one when you're painting. How do we make it not look so spindly? And this is how, fill that base in, flat, drag and draw away. Remember every three or four strokes to wet your brush gives you more control. So if your color's a little bit off, as long as it's dark and it's made up of these three primaries, you're, you're spot on. So I wouldn't fret too much, okay? All right, so this is what mine looks like so far. I didn't get too busy down here because you can see, I'm gonna take a moment to show you back to back. I want you to see how much gold is happening down here. We don't have a lot of green going on, okay? So that's the way I'm setting that up. I'm gonna give you a moment while I transition my brushes. Um, I'd like to say, if you'll stay with me, you can always go back. The PowerPoint is really detailed. There's nothing that you'll miss that I haven't spoken about here. And you'll say, ah, I remember that. What I'd like to do now is transition and go to the trunk. It'll take us five minutes for the trunk, but it's gonna take us three or four minutes to mix that color for the trunk. You need your stash green, your first green that we've been working out of. We're gonna add white to that first. When you tint it or add white, you can actually see what color you're working with. When it's this dark, you can't necessarily um, enjoy the color or the chroma is another name for what you're actually looking at, okay? So I'm gonna go first and just show you what I'm talking about. So I've been working out of this. I'm gonna transfer a little bit over here and I'm gonna add some white. So it, it moves, it changes immediately to like a sage, okay? What we want is to warm it up a little bit. Now, you may not have that sage color. You may have a different ratio in combination after painting and that's fine. That's why this is just a guidance, okay? So I have this wonderful sage. I want to pick up a tiny little bit of red just to warm it up. Um, and it'll turn it a warmer, sort of a warm gray tone. The important bit here, really wipe your brush off so you can control how much your paint you're picking up. And I'm gonna pick up just a little bit on the point of this brush, right? You could be using, again, a palette knife, but then just a tip on the palette knife. And as I'm introducing, you see how quickly, rapidly, that's an aggressive color, but as I mix it in, It's your base green that we were working out of that we've been using on the canvas to lay the palm out. I moved over about a, a quarter size or a penny size and moved that over so I could concentrate on only that. I cleaned my brush and I added a little white. I'll do it again so you can see the color transition happen. There's the green or my dark base. And we all have, it, we all have a little different color. I'm gonna add, I, I um, suggest and I teach small increments of color change at a time. So you can see what's happening. So there it starts transitioning and I see that I have a light 
I called it a sage. Okay, just a little lighter. And now the addition, I wipe my brush, the addition of just the tiniest increment of red, just to warm up. It starts to go a sort of a brown. Okay, that's the color that we're looking for. These are a little different. I think I added a little more white. And again, you can't go wrong. As long as you lightened it to the degree that I showed you so that the contrast is there, what we wanna do is show the, we're gonna introduce the light source now. So the light source happens in a painting. When you're creating a composition, it's, you, you paint your subject matter, you've got your background, and then what's really beautiful to finish it off is where is the light coming from? What's it shining on and what's it not shining on? So that gives you your light and your shadow. We already have painted the shadow in because we only had two hours for all of this instruction, blending, mixing and everything. We only have two hours. If you're at home, I would usually create the structure of, for example, the trunk, then I'll have a shadow color, then I'll add my light. In this case, our base color and our shadow were the same because we're plain air painting, right? We're grabbing something fast and we're gonna go. I'm gonna turn my canvas over. Our light source is coming in from this side. So we're gonna be lightening up the right side with this new uh, color chroma that we've created. That's where we're working, okay? So your brush is gonna be lined up on this side. Let me try and do it upside down. I can't promise the world that I'll do my best, right? So <laughs> remember the exercise again, that we lined up with the side and that we dra gently dragged across, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna lighten this. Now I don't want to totally get rid of the base we'd laid down. So I'm gently gonna drag and lift. I wanna leave a little of that last color because we need the shadow to, to be seen, right? A tip, um, Often I paint with I paint with acrylics often. Many many people think I'm actually a, a, an oil painter, and I do, but they c confuse the other. One of the tips I'm going to offer you when you do this: begin just outside of the other line. I'm always painting into the other color or over the other color, just a little bit. So that means instead of laying that brush right there, skip over into your blue, gently, and overlay those two colors. And then you're gonna gently drag in. You can see sometimes it's a touch and a pull. Sometimes just it's a touch. You just need that little bit of color and it's more organic if it's not the same width all the way down. Then we may as well have just done a stripe down, right? And this gives us those segments where you can, um, that you see where the old fronds have fallen off. There's many different trunks on a tree. We're doing the most simple because of the sake of time, but the textures and contours that happen in those trunks are beautiful to paint, but they're all different brush techniques. So again, I'm not gonna see much that's happening in here because that's a front, right? Drag and pull, drag and pull, drag and pull. And when you get right up to the top, you don't drag and pull, you don't see it as much. Once you've complete completed that. So the first sequence, the first step was the dark green. We laid that out. Then we added white, lightened it so we could see what color we're working with. Just a small increment of red. It was warm. Okay. Now we want to do one more color shift. I'm going to wet my brush so I can control how much paint I'm putting on there. I'm going to wipe my brush off. And on my palette, I'm going to add a little more white to the last color. I'm gonna tint it again. Remember adding white, you're tinting. So just a small amount, small increments of color change. It's so difficult to repair something when you've just taken vast amounts of paint um, and tried to blend them together. And it's wonderful training for your eye to see the color change because that's how you learn. So it's, it's about two shades up on a paint chip chart. Uh, that's how I often um, speak about it. So. Again, I'm gonna, I'll turn it sideways so that, or upside down so you guys can see. Now, this last one, we're not gonna, we're not gonna um, treat the entire tree. 
if the sun is shining this way and it's coming in on the palm, in on the palm, where's my hand? So right here is the highlight. We don't want to do the whole tree. Well, we, every time we touch the, uh, touch the canvas or the subject matter with the light color, the light source, every time it gets lighter and lighter, we paint in a smaller area, a smaller area. So finally, there's that speck of light that says, aha, that's where the shine's happening. So it's going to go right in here. Okay, same thing. Touch. I'm going over onto the blue a little bit and drag in touch and drag in. If you can't see the contrast and that you've added white, you didn't add enough white. You're also welcome to add a little yellow here. If you're a skilled painter and you're painting a little more rapidly, you are welcome to add a little more white. Uh, sorry, to add a little yellow, but you don't have to. And if you did, this is what it would look like. Okay, it just warms it up a little bit, but I'm not going to go through that step. Okay, so that is our trunk. And wash those brushes and we're going to keep going okay you should have enough of this last color okay we're always working on well generally working on the last color so this last lighter color that we created while you have it on your brush while you have it on your brush it's the highlight color that we used I'm sharing this because it's a wonderful technique that I use in order to integrate different parts of one subject matter. So we want to unite visually for the eye so that it's pleasing the palm fronds and the trunk. So while I have this specific color that I may never use again, I wanna go ahead and place it in the palm tree. So if you'll follow my lead or take your own lead, Again, if you're an, a painter with experience, I'm gonna to move to the right side of the canvas because this is where the light's coming, right? And this is a light source color. So I'm gonna place it at the top and I'm gonna drag it down. That's one place. I'm gonna move up into the second. It doesn't matter if you're going over other fronds that you placed there, that's the point. Palms just layer and layer and layer, and it's through small increments of color change that you develop this full, lush tree. Um, I may have a little more yellow. I was showing some of the advanced painters, but it doesn't have, as long as it's the lighter color, as long as it's your color. That's what I want to say. You're connecting your painting, and this is a connector. I'm also seeing that's what's showing up on the screen is a little different and a little brighter than what I'm actually painting. So um, as long as it's your color, we will have an opportunity to get brighter with yellows later. What I'm wanting us to do is just use up the rest of what we have and integrate the painting. So you see, it's just a touch or two on each frond. It's not a tremendous amount and it's a combing or a quick brush. After this, we're gonna transit, we'll be transitioning to our fan brush. This is a color, a marriage of colors. You can think about it that way. When you're building a painting, so often you, use a color and then you go on to a different subject matter that doesn't use that color. Um, and so we forget about it and we don't mix it, but it's a wonderful practice to merge your pieces and parts of the painting together with a consistency of color using a little bit of the last color in the next subject matter. So that's what we did. Now that we're finished with that, this brush is gonna go in the water and I'm going to shift to the fan brush. We use the fan brush a little bit Okay, I'm gonna wet my fan brush and I'm gonna dab it. What we're gonna do for color is go back to that base green. Remember the green was blue and yellow, one part to one part, equal parts, then half in red. If you need to create it again, you can do that. It doesn't have to be spot on, but we're gonna go back to that, co that color. And we're going to add yellow 
a nice head of yellow. I'll show you what that color looks like. We want to brighten that. So we're, gonna, we're going back to the original green or the original dirty dark color that we all used. You should have enough. You only need a small amount of it. And we're gonna add a nice dose of yellow so that we have a nice bright green. A bit of an avocado green, okay? Makes a little water in that color just so it moves fluidly. Okay, here I go. Wet the tip of my fan brush. Pick up a little of that color. I'm gonna go clockwise or counterclockwise again. I'm gonna lay it flat against the center of the palm, just as we did before. Now, fan brushes tend to have a little life of their own and a little voice of their own. So you can't control it as much as some of the other brushes. Watch what I do here at where I want the fullness of the palm. Can you see, I'm gonna slow mow it, right, left, right, left. I, I'm just gonna say I wiggle it back and forth and that fills it in, right? Then I'm gonna drag and lift. Whoops, I need a little more water. Drag and lift, drag and lift, drag and lift. What I want to share is if you work with a fan brush for a bit, I'd like you to experience it. If you think, oh, this is not for me, I dipped it in the water a little bit again. If, but if you think this is really not for me, you're welcome to go back to either your point or your flat brush. I love using this brush. Remember, you can turn it sideways also. It really gives the wispiness that we're looking for. It works a little better when you keep it wet. So depending on what paint product you have, they are all different in their fluidity. Some of you might have paint that seems to have more body, so it's more chunky. You might want to add more water to it so that it's fluid. Some of the student uh, paints are very fluid and that's gonna work for you in this case. Wet it, so every two to three, brush strokes, I'm wetting it. So it's small increments of color change. When you change and alter the color, you treat the entire tree or all of the foliage. You, it doesn't have to be consistent. You can hit it once or twice and then move to the next frond. You don't have to do the same thing all over. Remember the pressure and the gentle drag and lift off, the drag and lift off, drag and lift off. If you do anything that seems too dense and you're thinking, oh no, remember that you either have your base blue or it's so easy to mix that color again. Remember it was just a one-to-one -one and so I call it, you can poke, poke your sky, poke holes in your tree and open the sky back up. Here I go again, if you'd like to see that rocking back and forth, it's a rocking motion. If I were to slow down, I rock and that fills it in and then I drag. If I don't rock, it's more open than I would like. So I do that to fill in those places so it's not too spindly and I don't do that everywhere. All right. So if you're moving right through your painting or if you're an advanced painter and you're waiting, what we're gonna do next, um, 
is actually make a brand new little pot of paint. My favorite combination for landscapes when I need a really bright apple green is simply yellow and black. And so you'll begin, wipe your, uh, wipe your brush off, wash your brush off. You're, I'm going to take um, a nice head of yellow and add a small amount of black. And you'll see if not too much, smaller inc increments of color change. We're looking for a bright green that's brighter than the green that we just used. off. Again, you may have a palette knife. I'm going to begin with yellow. Nice head of yellow. Wipe my brush off so that I'm in control of how much paint I'm picking up. Now, just a slight tip of black so that you can watch the transition that happens. I think I actually may have had, that's not too bad. I may have had a bit. Now it's difficult to see on a clear against black. I'm gonna paint this, see how bright that green is? I'm painting it onto the tray so that you can see color, okay? We're gonna begin with that. Then we're gonna add influence it and add a little more yellow and, and work with a fan brush. And this is what we're doing. So the sequence will be this color. We're gonna to touch here and there with a fan brush. Then we're gonna add a little more yellow, touch here and there with a fan brush, add a little more red, touch it with a fan brush and then white. And it's just that, and it's like two minutes at a time. We roll through and that's how you'll see the sequence in the PowerPoint. I have the transitions of color where you just, adding to the last color that we use, small increments of color change. Just black and yellow, there's no red in there right now, just black and yellow. Begin with yellow, small tip of black so that you can see the transition and you should have a shocking kind of an apple green. It's a wonderful green to use in any landscapes. All right, I'm gonna go, I'm working counterclockwise again. And this color will not go everywhere. So if you want to look up and just look for the look for the flash of green, first place I'm going to treat is the left half, the left side. Drag and remember the trick. You don't have to, but remember that trick of altering the direction with this brush. It's a wonderful tool. Now I'm gonna go up to the tip. Remember the light source is coming in from the top right of our canvas. So that's where we want to, we're seeking to lighten it there. Okay, I'm gonna wet my brush, dab it. It, it glides a little easier and is more fluid with the help of a little water. And it helps keep a productive, and fine line. Remember flat against the center of the palm and drag. Once again, please don't treat everything. If you treat all of it, the viewer doesn't know what to look at first. It all just seems like a lot of detail. You want to see that shadow somewhere in the back. When you're capturing anything, there's a, any, any imagery, especially in nature, landscapes, waterscapes, there's a life that it has 
on its own. And then there's a life that your tools have that you can't completely control. So the goal is to synthesize all of it so that it's a welcome experience and you don't, you have enough technique. So you have control of your tools, but you don't um, control it so much that you take the life out of what can be creative, which means rather than saying, oh, but it should have looked like that. I need to redo it. Enjoy what that is, add some colors and see what can happen. And that's what happens in nature. If you haven't ever been outside with plein air painting, it's simply fantastic. Um, you need to work with oils or they've come up with water soluble oils now that change the experience. Acrylics drive too quickly for, um, for the air outside. Okay, so that's green. The next thing that I'm going to do is add a little white to the green. So I'm going to repeat what the color we just used was yellow with black, that's it. Now I'm going to tint it. So I'm going to lighten it a little bit and I'm going to add a slight, let's see, let, so I don't go too far ahead of you. I've tinted it. Again, if it was on a paint chip chart that we get from the paint stores, it's about at least two shades up. So it's a lighter green. I'm gonna wipe my brush. So we tinted it, which means we added white. That's all we've done. And now just the slightest touch, I just have a little bit on the tip of my brush of red, and it's going to turn it to an, an amber. We're moving towards our ochres and our warm tones. You'll see on the original that I created from one of my larger paintings, there's this blonde, warm, woody tone actually. So that's where we're headed right now. If you are a, an experienced painter, do your thing. You will see all kinds of colors in here that you'd like to explore. So we tinted our last green, small increments of color change, and then we added just a little red. Okay, and right back in with my, I'm gonna clean my fan brush off. And now I'm in a different place than I was with the last green. Remember that little wiggle right at the center and a drag that gives a little more of the color so you're not just placing color that looks like spindles. You really make an impact with the different colors this way. And we're getting to a place in the painting that, um, you know, in the fronds, work with what makes your eye happy, honestly. Orange and red, you know, re sorry, or orange, or red and, and yellow make orange. If you'd like to brighten, you can, especially where your sun source is. I'd rather you explore something right here with me. And if it doesn't work out, just quickly ask me, oh, what do I do? <laughs> rather than do the same thing. But I'm hoping that you all have found a nice new tool in your fan brush and you can see all that can be accomplished by that. If you're wanting to keep to move on and you have already finished, some of you I know work a little faster, the last shift here is to use, add a little white to this color. Enough white so it's that flash of white on a palm. And it would only be in a few places. Add 
a little white. Quite a lot of white. And get close. You can see where we're at so far. I just added white to the last color. So now we're at a very gentle, like a, a, a kind of a peachy tone. I don't want to get too scholastic with art terminology. Um, Your, your light source right at the end is what really illuminates and brings things to life. Again, you don't want to, to do this everywhere because once again, the viewer doesn't know what to look at first and it can create a lot of busyness. So the first thing that I do is that even drag and placement, and then I'll flip the brush and isolate. A couple fronds. Think about your light source. Would it be shining? Would it be shining at that place that you are thinking about painting this? All right, so once you have, here we go with the palms. And as I shared with you earlier, when we took the trunk color, and we put it on the tree for integration. Now this is the lightest highlight color that we've created so far. So even if it's just in one place on your trunk, be ever so careful, I'm gonna choose somewhere here and to integrate and marry the two parts of this tree, we wanna use the same color. So I'm gonna do a, remember we lined it up and we just dragged. Because the same light, when you look at something shimmering, that same light is the color is gonna show up in everything that it's hitting. All right, your la no, two last things left. And this can be done, both are done with your point or your, uh, your uh, detail or liner. You need a small point. That's what I was trying to refer to. And I just take pure white. So you can go right into your white and it's this, uh, there's just a slight shimmer that happens and it would need to be in the places that the light's already shining, okay? So what we need to think, I'm gonna flip this around. So in this case, it's a thinking game really, unless you have a photo that you're working from. Let's say the sun, let me get my hand down. Let's say the sun is right here and it's coming and it's reflecting right down on that tree source of illumination, you could just figure it out. It's gonna happen right here on the fronds or the foliage that's on the outside of the tree. And it will generally fall down on what's on the outside in its path. That's the most effective way to use it in a painting. If you paint everything, then the, there's no light source, right? It's just all color. 
So it's really just by choice and you can choose where to put that as, you know, in as a creator. Again, I'm working the upside down, so please excuse me. But if the sun's shining here, then right here, so it might hit, you can see just a little bit, bit of color right there on a tip. And it's just touch and go. You may want to explore a full drag here in the front, but I wouldn't get, I wouldn't explore that much because you've done something really successful here with a lot of work and something too big and too long could need to, uh, you'd really have to um, repair something. So just a touch, right here's my light source. I might wanna touch just a little bit right here. And it often reflects right up there at the top of the palm as it's folding over. It's going to crown right there at the top. So you see that little bit of silhouette. Okay, and then it might hit the tip of one of these palms because it's gonna travel through the painting. You're now saying, okay, viewer, who's viewing my creation and my painting, this is what I'd like you to see. So you're creating that interest that, and telling them where to look next. So just a spot here and there. And again, this is a detailed brush or a script liner. You may just want to put a, one touch of this on your trunk somewhere in the detail. And while you have, once you've finished with that, the last thing that you'll want to do is um, any points or tips of your fronds that you'd like to clean up, you should have a nice palette left of everything that you just worked on. This is great. We don't have to take the time to do it on camera because you have it in your home and I'm not going to do it to mine. I don't necessarily choose that amount of detail, but if you wanted to, you could very readily give yourself very fine tip if you wanted to tip these out. I like things that are a little bushy and a little unkept, um, especially when I'm doing landscapes. But you do have, I also do photorealism and I use a whole lot of this when you actually have to do that. Biggest tip I have is use whatever you can here to fill in the center so that your palms aren't spindly in the future. That's one of the greatest um, questions that I hear and one of the greatest quests that come up. And the last um, bit after you've done your whites, after you've tipped out, this is a great time to play for accent colors. Now, just because you choose it, you're thinking, what could I do? So if I take red and yellow, it's not part of the painting class. I'm just going to pop it in here. If you want it to access with um, accent with a very hot orange, here and there, I will turn it back around. I mixed a very fiery orange just with red and white. But in that highlight, you know, in the sun, beautiful colors sometimes happen. So I'll put this in just in one or two places and I'll spin it around. This is completely by option. You may also choose a vibrant, blue to put in amongst there, a purple. And that, that I would generally do by choice on location with a very finely tipped brush so you know where it's going. All right, so I just introduced a little hot orange. You can see how things transition pretty quickly and warm up. And then what's left is your signature. Thank you for painting with us. And thank you for joining the Appleton Museum Education Department until we see you again online. Thank you so much.